Welcome back to Cool Facts TV, your go-to destination for the most intriguing, mind-boggling, and downright cool facts from around the globe. We're on a mission to explore the lesser-known corners of our fascinating world, one fact at a time. From the mysteries of the animal kingdom and space exploration, to strange historical events and peculiar phenomena, we've got it all covered. So if you're a curious mind eager to learn and be amazed, you're in the right place. But before we dive into today's set of jaw-dropping facts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss out on any of the fun. All right, ready to have your mind blown? Let's get started. The shortest war in history lasted only 38 minutes. It was fought between the countries of Zanzibar and the United Kingdom. The shortest war in recorded history was a brisk 38 minutes long. This brief but notable conflict occurred between the Sultanate of Zanzibar and the United Kingdom on the 27th of August, 1896. Following the death of the Sultan, a successor took the throne in Zanzibar without British approval, which was a violation of a previous treaty. In response, the British issued an ultimatum demanding that the new Sultan step down. When he didn't comply, British warships anchored in the harbor of Zanzibar's town opened fire on the Sultan's palace. After a mere 38 minutes, the Sultan's forces surrendered. This swift display of military power resulted in a decisive British victory, firmly solidifying their influence in the region. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. Flamingos with their vibrant hues and distinctive posture are indeed flamboyant creatures, so much so that a group of these striking birds is appropriately termed a flamboyance. Now, have you ever wondered about the source of their brilliant pink coloration? Interestingly, it's all down to their diet. Flamingos feast on a variety of organisms, such as shrimp, algae, and other tiny creatures that inhabit the water bodies they call home. These meals are rich in pigments called carotenoids. When a flamingo digests these organisms, the carotenoids get broken down into their bodies and are absorbed into their feathers, skin, and beak, giving them their iconic pink hue. So, the secret to a flamingo's flamboyance? It's all in their food! The inventor of Pringles, Frederick Bauer, had his ashes buried in a Pringles can. It's not often that an inventor becomes so synonymous with their invention, but such is the case with Frederick Bauer. Bauer was the mastermind behind the distinctive tubular packaging of Pringles, the globally loved potato chip brand. He came up with the design in 1966 while working for Procter & Gamble, aiming to solve the problem of broken chips in standard bags. His unique saddle-shaped chip design and its corresponding can were a revolution standing out on shelves and preserving the chip's crunch. So connected was Bauer to his invention that, upon his death in 2008, a portion of his cremated remains were buried in a Pringles can as per his last wishes. This quirky request was honored by his family, creating an indelible link between the inventor and his iconic creation. Cats have a unique collarbone that allows them to always land on their feet. Cats are renowned for their agility and balance, epitomized by their impressive ability to almost always land on their feet, a phenomenon known as the riding reflex. This is in large part thanks to their unique skeletal structure, particularly their collarbone or clavicle. See, unlike in humans, a cat's clavicle is not directly connected to other bones, but is buried in the muscles of the shoulder region. This arrangement allows for a greater range of movement in the upper body, enabling cats to twist and turn mid-air. Paired with a highly flexible backbone and keen sense of balance maintained by their inner ear, this unique feature equips cats with their uncanny ability to reorient themselves during a fall and land upright, minimizing injuries. All the swans in England are owned by the Queen. 
England has a curious, centuries-old law that may surprise you. All unmarked mute swans in open water are considered the property of the crown, effectively meaning they're all owned by the queen. This law dates back to the 12th century when swan meat was a highly prized delicacy for the wealthy and owning swans was a status symbol. Today, the royal prerogative over swans is mainly exercised during the annual swan upping. This ceremony involves a census and health check of the swan population on certain stretches of the River Thames. The Queen's Swan Marker, the official in charge of the event, leads a flotilla of traditional rowing skiffs to count the swans and check their health. It's a quirky British tradition that serves as a reminder of the country's rich history and the enduring majesty of these elegant birds. A group of hedgehogs is called a prickle. When it comes to collective nouns, the English language can be wonderfully creative. Case in point, a group of hedgehogs is delightfully referred to as a prickle. This term is a playful nod to the hedgehog's most distinctive feature, its prickly spines. However, you might not often see a prickle of hedgehogs, as these small mammals are typically solitary creatures by nature. They only come together to mate or in special circumstances where food is abundant. Despite their solitary lifestyle, the term prickle has stuck around in our language, adding a touch of charm and whimsy to these adorable creatures. Charlie Chaplin once entered a Charlie Chaplin look-alike contest and he came in third place. In a twist of irony that seems straight out of one of his comedic films, Charlie Chaplin, the legendary silent film star, once entered a Charlie Chaplin look-alike contest only to come in third place. The contest was held in San Francisco during the height of Chaplin's fame in the early 20th century. Unknown to the judges and competitors, Chaplin, intrigued and amused, decided to participate under an assumed name. Despite perfectly imitating his own trademark waddle and slapstick style, he simply didn't make the cut. This amusing anecdote has since become a classic tale in Hollywood lore, underscoring the unique charisma and charm that made Charlie Chaplin so much more than just a familiar face. Astronauts can grow up to two inches taller in space due to the lack of gravity. The wonders of space travel extend to some surprising physical changes for astronauts, one of which is an increase in height. In the microgravity environment of space, astronauts can grow up to two inches taller. This happens because the spine, no longer compressed by the force of Earth's gravity, has a chance to re-expand. On Earth, the discs between our vertebrae are slightly squashed due to gravity, keeping our height in check. But in space, these discs expand, which lengthens the spine and adds to the astronaut's height. However, don't be too excited, this growth is only temporary. Once the astronaut returns to Earth and is again subjected to gravity, their height too returns to normal after just a few months. Despite the temporary nature of this space-induced growth spurt, it's a fascinating glimpse into how our bodies adapt to different environments. Lobsters can live up to 100 years. Lobsters are fascinating creatures, not just for their culinary value, but for their surprising longevity. These crustaceans are known to live up to 100 years old, and some may live even longer. Unlike many other creatures, lobsters don't show typical signs of aging. They don't slow down, lose fertility, or strength a phenomenon known as negligible senescence. Furthermore, lobsters continue to grow throughout their lives. This means that older lobsters are often larger than their younger counterparts. The exact reasons for their longevity are still a topic of scientific study, but it's clear that these remarkable creatures hold some intriguing secrets to a long life, making them a standout in the marine world. It's impossible to hum while holding your nose. Okay, here's a fun experiment you can try right now. Try to hum while holding your nose. You'll find that it's impossible. But why is that? See, when you hum, 
You produce sound by expelling air through your nose while your mouth is closed. This process makes the air vibrate, producing the humming sound. However, when you close off your nasal passages by holding your nose, the air can't escape and hence can't vibrate to create sound. This fun fact is more than just a party trick. It's a true testament to the intricacies of the human body and how it produces sound. Go on, give it a try. You might just surprise yourself. And there you have it, folks. 10 mind-blowing facts that you probably didn't know before you clicked on this video. From the shortest war in history to the surprising intricacies of our own bodies, we hope we've given your brain a good workout and your curiosity a spark. Remember, the world is brimming with fascinating knowledge, and here at Cool Facts TV, we just can't wait to uncover more of it with you. Before you go, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow trivia lovers. If you have any cool facts of your own, be sure to drop them in the comments section below. We love to hear from our viewers. Thanks again for joining us on this journey of discovery. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.